came to tell you. You're shrinking? Manny measured me for a new suit an hour ago. Turns out I'm shrinking. Where? You want to listen to me? You want to tell your funny jokes? I can do both. <laughs> Peter Lasker and Paul Schaff. Oh, you're kidding. Snowing in Pittsburgh. Dan, in case you're going to Atlantic City. Not tonight. Paul and Peter are stuck at the airport? They've been sitting on the tarmac. Casey and Dan are going to be pretty mad, Isaac. You better get in there and tell them. I've decided to let you do it. Really? I'm delegating. Thank you. No, no, no. Paul and Peter are on a tarmac and Pittsburgh. 60 seconds to VTR. 90 seconds live. Stand by VTR. Paul and Peter aren't going to make it. It's snowing. The guys think they're going to Atlantic City. Not tonight. Who's going to tell them? Funny you should ask that, Natalie. Roll, VTR. <laughs> I say double down, what do you do? Can we stop? I say double down, what do you do? How do you know you're in the zone? Cut me. Danny, I cut the cards. Nine. Jack. Seven. Eight. Queen. Dude, you are in the zone. I said double down. Double my ass down. Tell us, I've got some bad news. There's no bad news tonight, Natalie. When the show comes down, Danny and I are hopping in a limo, heading down the Garden State Parkway and getting off the exit clearly marked the zone. That's great, Casey, but all those things you just said? Yeah. Not gonna happen. Show the car thing. Paul and Peter are trapped in an airport. Snowing in Pittsburgh. You've got to stay and do the West Coast update. Look, I know you guys had your heart set on going to Atlantic City and that this isn't the first time that this has happened. But all I can... Yeah. It's no problem. It's no problem? It's no problem. You're kidding. Life's like that sometimes, Natalie. You can't control the weather, so you shouldn't worry about it. We all work for the same network. We're happy to help out. I have to say, I'm really impressed with the maturity you two are exhibiting right now. Part the job. Have a good show. Bites. Bites hard. Bites. In three, two. Good evening. From New York City, I'm Dan Rydell alongside Casey McCall. Those stories, plus a Ryder Cup preview and a trip to the big sombrero. We'll run down how the top draft picks are faring in the big time, and we'll run up the flag in Greensboro. All that coming up after this. You're watching Sports Night on CSC, so stick around. We're out. Anyway, I, I really appreciate the two of you sticking around and filling in. It's no problem. Oh, please. You think I want to be stuck doing the 2 a.m.? This is just a temp gig. Temp gig? Temporary gig. Thanks. My stuff's out there. I talk to a lot of people. Just as long as none of them are talking back. CNBC, <laughs> MSNBC. M-O-U-S-C. Yeah. Well, like she's listening to anybody but herself. Even CNN. 
Looking? Oh, yeah. Listen, Sally, we're sort of in the middle of a, what do you call it, a national television show. No, but we do Maybe good work just... on the 2 a.m. Yeah. Sally, we're back in 30 and you're in our shot. I have a keen dislike for that woman. She's perfectly nice. She is not perfectly nice, and I'd appreciate a little backup here. Could we have a bond over this, please? Fine. I'll stop thinking Sally's nice if you'll stop thinking Jeremy is right. I never said he was right. Hey, I'm sitting right here. Stay quiet. Thank you. <laughs> Sally, camera two's got your butt pretty well framed, so if you wouldn't mind stepping out of the shot. <laughs> Thank you. And be sure Casey sees your cleavage as you walk out. There you go. In three, two. That's all for us, but don't shed a tear, because Casey and I will be back at 2 a.m. on this coast, 11 p.m. on the left, subbing in for Peter Lasker and Paul Schapp on the West Coast Update. So don't adjust that dial, and while we're gone, if any talking animals ask you to buy some tacos or beer, for God's sake, do what they tell you. You've been watching Sports Night on CSC. Have a good night. Good night, Mom. We're out. <clears throat> you know, it occurs to me we have some time to kill. Yes. And a deck of cards. Yes. We've been to the ATM. Some people around here with a little too much change in their pockets. I'm going to lighten these folks up a little uh, bit. Take them off their coin. You know what they say? About what? About money won. What do they say? I don't know. I'm asking. They say it's twice as sweet as money earned. How come you said what do they say? No, it was an alley-oop pass. I was dishing you the ball. You were. And I completely missed it. Well, I was there for the putback. I wouldn't be able to do anything with it anyway. That's right. Because I didn't know the expression. Not only that, but it was like half an hour ago, and we're still talking about it. Uh-oh. You're not in the zone anymore, are you? Not in the zone. Lost the zone. I'm down here with the rest of you. <laughs> Let's play cards. Come on. Hey, Isaac, you in here? Whoa, I can barely see you down there. <laughs> Pretty funny coming from someone I can fire any time I like. I downloaded some stuff on osteoporosis. Dana, this is no joke. I know. And the good news is it says here that osteoporosis isn't an inevitable part of aging, as once was thought. In fact, if you haven't reached menopause yet... <gasps> no, wait. Hold on. Thank you very much. Either of you interested in participating in the sport of kings? We're going to race horses? We're going to play poker. That's not the sport of kings. What's the sport of kings? Racing horses. What's poker the sport of? It's the sport of people who play poker. Thank you. Isaac's shrinking. Oh, yeah, Dad, I forgot to ask you. Please, spread that around. What do you say? We got nothing to do for two hours. $10 minimum, three raise limit? Whatever. Shoe money tonight! Whatever. Isaac? I'll play a couple of hands. Isaac, I'm going to bring along this material on shrinking and read it aloud as we play. Unless you think that's going to distract you. No, I just want to make sure you've got time to put your resume together and clean out your desk. It's nuts about me. It was one night. It was ten. It's the only night we've had the same night off together for like two weeks. We're together every night anyway, so... At midnight! We go back to my place or we go back to your place. We have a lot of sex. We watch the 2 a.m. wrap-up. We go to sleep. We come to work. What kind of a relationship is that? It's working out pretty well for me. It was a joke. I made a joke. I like to make you laugh. Why? Because I like you very much. Jeremy? Yeah? It wasn't the greatest joke I've ever heard. I never said it was opening for Jack Benny. You meant Henny Youngman. I meant Jack Benny. Jack Benny plays the clarinet. Jack Benny plays the violin. For that matter, so does Henny Youngman. But you're thinking of Benny Goodman. Do you really always have to be right? No. Then why are you still talking? Because I am right. Good a guess. Hey, if we're going to fight, can it not be about Henny Youngman? We're not fighting about Henny Youngman. We're fighting because instead of going to the movies with me, you decided to play tennis with Judy Rudy Tootie. You guys getting all this? You know someone named Judy Rudy Tootie? Judy Reston Taylor. The actress? Yeah, we went to school together. I hear she's great in that new thing. Thank you, Siskel and Ebert. <laughs> Natalie. Hey, we're playing poker in the conference room. You guys in? Uh, Natalie and I can't play. It's important we spend these precious moments together. Oh, there'll be no precious moments tonight, darling. You know what I mean? I think I do. No precious moments of any kind. I understand. 
If, however, your arrogance extends to thinking you're a better poker player than I am, you are welcome to join me at the card table so that I can wipe that smug smile off your face and teach you a lesson you so richly deserve. Natalie, do you even know how to play poker? The guys at Sigma Kappa Pi let me play in their poker game anytime I wanted. Now, why do you suppose that was? Because you're a knockout and your parents are loaded? Because I got game, baby. Have you fallen on your head? Or are you just afraid I might humiliate you and you won't be able to go to Sundance with Judy the Ho? I tell you, Casey, it appears some time has freed up in my schedule and I just might be able to play cards with you after all. Rack them up, Casey. Oh. That's cool, you mental patient. It's gonna be a fun night. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Pretty startling how little time it takes to go from being in the zone to being not in the zone. Yeah. Tell him about the time I was in the zone. There was a time he was in the zone. Beautiful. Yes, it was, but you know what? What? That's yesterday's news. You're what was. Look at your cards and make a bet. <laughs> Fold. Call. Shoe money tonight. Would you stop that? <laughs> Seems when he was growing up, he didn't get enough calcium and vitamin D. Eight possible flush. Six, no help. Queen, no help. Ace is bet. Ten dollars. Natalie. Ten dollars. Do you think you owe me enough money? I was taught to play poker by the boys of Sigma Kappa Pi. I'm doing fine. Natalie, you owe me like seven hundred thousand dollars. I'm basically your landlord at this point. Stop playing. Jealous of the frat boys? There are times you're not that easy to love. Oh, my guys. Us? We are putting together a great show for you guys. Good. Well, great is relative, I guess. I mean, it's just the 2 a.m. On your show, though, man, I could really do my thing. I mean, let it fly. Sally, can I talk to you a second? Guess there's only one Dana Whitaker, though. Sally? I have a hunch Dana's about to make that point right now. Air kings. Trip aces. Uh, ooh, straight to the jack. Can I say something? Sure. Of my entire roster of boyfriends, and it is, believe me, quite the lengthy list, you are my least favorite. Hey, I'm just happy to be on the team. On segments 10, 12, and... Thirteen. I really don't want to get into a little thing with you. No, you really don't. On segments 10, 12, and 13... Yeah, I, I'm just saying, the 2 a.m. is my show. And you do a good job. Yeah, I'm not staying there forever, Dana. I have got people talking to me. MSNBC... Sally? Yeah, I don't really care that much about your life. Well, look who's the belle of the ball. Right. On segments 10, 12, and 13... What about them? Casey's not going to want to do it this way. He likes to break up the highlights with features or remotes. Casey approves your rundowns? No, but that's me. We've been working together a really long time. It's like a marriage. He trusts me with you, and I hope you don't take this personally. With you, he's going to want to approve the rundown. He already he approved it. No, he approved it, and he said it was fine. <laughs> He said it was fine. Well, he didn't really look at it, but he said, hey, you're the producer, whatever you think is best. Huh, he mm. said that. Yeah. Huh, interesting. <laughs> can I, do you, can I ask, did he say it like, hey, you're the producer, whatever you think is best, or did he say it like, you're the producer, whatever you think is best, it doesn't really matter, since I know Dana's going to look over the rundown and take care of it anyway. The first one. <laughs> Interesting. You've got a little thing for Casey, don't you? I can't tell you how little a thing I don't have. It's okay. He's very cute. Recently divorced, makes a ton of money, and I'm sure he's got good contacts. You know, I don't mind telling you I could really go for him. We don't even need to have a relationship, just the sex and the contacts. My friendship with you is the important thing, Dana. I, I really mean that, and I don't want anything to get... Oh, Sally... I can tell you're starting to open up to me a little, and I think that's great, but I'm pretty much done talking with you right now. We'll have drinks? Absolutely. See ya. Okay. Jackson Force. Uh, trip fives. Straight. Uh, 
I know why you're beating me so much. It's because you're not a very good poker player. That's not why. It really is. Or isn't it just possible that you're sitting in the good chair? No. What is possible is that the boys from Sigma Kappa Pi are a big honking bunch of losers. What I miss? Natalie's pretty much divested herself of possessions. I'm mounting a comeback. Isaac? Did somebody step on Isaac? Oh, no. There you are. Hey, you still work here? I'll never leave you, little buddy. Casey? Yep. Ow. Can I talk to you outside for a second? Yes. Do you approve Tally's rundown? Yeah. You approved it? Yes. Just like that? It was approved? What? Well, no confirmation hearings or anything. No, you just approved it without even looking at well, I it. I never need to approve your rundowns. That's right. I have done something wrong for the life of me. Casey? Oh, we're about to have a little talk, oh, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't osteoporosis pretty common? Very common. Especially among Caucasian women. Bummer. Yes. What are you going to do with your old suits? I was thinking about shoving them up your... No problem. <laughs> I'm taking a break if anyone wants my seat. It's the good chair. I'm just going to run to the bathroom. You want to come with me to the bathroom, Dan? Why, no, Jeremy, I don't. You don't want to step outside with me and talk on our way to the bathroom? Sure. We're just stepping out and going to the bathroom. I didn't really have to go to the bathroom. Really? I just wanted to talk. I don't think anyone saw through your clever ruse. <laughs> I'm in the doghouse with Natalie. I'm coming in my office. It's a new relationship. Clearly, I've broken some rule that no one ever taught me. You play tennis with your friends. Right. Instead of going out with her. Yes. And one of those friends happened to be a beautiful actress. Yes. Dude. I know. <laughs> You were very wise to come to me with this problem. Thank you. Natalie is angry because she doesn't understand a fundamental principle. What's that? A principle? Yeah. A man's past is more important to him than his future. Ah. You understand? No. Neither do women. I know how they feel. You have to stand firm on this, Jeremy. Sooner or later, she's going to realize she's wrong, and when she does, you have to stand firm. You can't forgive her right away. She needs a little punishment. What kind of punishment? I withhold sex. You would? Yes. And that sounds like it'd be way worse for me than it would for her. Education isn't easy. You don't have any idea what you're talking about, do you? On this? No. Part of what you said is true. Really? Yeah, I have to stand firm. Not to establish an upper hand, but to establish equality. Exactly. We'll have an argument, and she will take a position that absolutely defies logic. Now, I have a pretty healthy respect for logic, but then all she has to do is put on one of my shirts. A shirt. She'll grab a white dress shirt from my closet. You're cooked. It's over. That's it. Like Bishop to Queen's Rook 7. Keep going. My chess team is playing Lakeland. I start my match. King's pawn three. King's pawn three. Bam, bam, bam. All of a sudden, the guy moves Bishop to Queen's Rook 7. I lost 32 moves later, but I was never even in it. Right. And that relates to Natalie wearing your shirt how? I have to stand firm. Thank you. Right. I've worked very hard over the years to learn what you like and what you don't like, what works for you and what doesn't, and it's very discouraging to learn. It turns out you've been taking it for granted. I haven't been taking it for granted. You've been taking it for granted? I haven't. You think Sally and I operate at the same level, and since you don't approve my rundowns, well, then there's no reason to approve hers. Sally, you know, Sally, do you understand what I'm talking about? Sally. Yes. Look, look let me try this. You are so good at your job, and Sally is so not that much, that the actual dichotomy, the, the, the phenomenal... Pathetic, you know what? I didn't want to bring this up, but it seems to me, and I'm just speaking as a friend, it seems to me that your jealousy of Sally doesn't have quite as much to do with her professional acumen as you would lead us to believe. Whoa there, Huckleberry. Come on back to the stable. First of all, Sally doesn't have any professional acumen. And second of all, what the hell are you talking about? I'm just saying that it's hard not to notice that the woman's body was put together by a technician very close to God. A technician close to God? Not God himself, but certainly a high-level staff person, a senior VP. Well, 
Her brain was put together by the assistant night guy at the 7-Eleven. Well, maybe so, but I think the source of your problem... Is her body? Uh, her legs do go all the way down to the floor, and she's going to be whispering in my ear for 30 minutes. Well, one of the things she's going to be whispering is Stand By 14, which will be your third straight highlight without a break for a feature. She's got cameras two and three as your primaries. Dan's doing soccer, and two of your intros contain puns. Puns? puns? There are puns? Yes. Puns. Bad ones. Is there such a thing as a good one? No. And you're not going to do anything about this? Well, sorry, pal. The two hands got my table. Help me out. I'm going to go play poker. You're going to go play cards while I'm doing puns on camera three? It's time to kick back. Sally! Last card. Who's still alive? Isaac, Natalie, and Jeremy. Did you have Casey talking to? Yes, I did. He didn't really mean anything, Dana. He just wasn't bonding. bonding. I'm bonding. sure he deserved it. Thank you. How you doing, Jeremy? I can't complain. I'm Shut up. Thank you. <laughs> Jeremy, ace bets. $50. Oh. Ray's 50. Natalie. And then there were two. I've raised you 50. Natalie, listen to me. You've lost a lot of money to me tonight. You're basically going to be living the rest of your life on a charitable grant from the Jeremy Goodwin Foundation. Take the hundred bucks back and fold. Scared. I've got a straight. You've got three sevens. You don't have a straight. Look at me. I'm not lying to you. I have a straight. How do you know I don't have a big house? <laughs> a full house. Dan already folded the six you needed, and I have the other one. You don't have a house of any sort. You don't have a pup tent. You've got trip sevens, and I have a straight. I want you to trust me right now. I want you to say to yourself, yeah, I've dated a string of jerks in my life. They were stupid. They were mean to me. But maybe this one's different. Maybe I should take a chance and not adopt the break up with him before he breaks my heart strategy. I want you to remember that when I started liking you, I didn't stop liking tennis. And I want you to know that I don't think there's a woman in the world that you need to be threatened by, no matter how glamorous you think she is. But mostly... I want you to trust me just once when I tell you that you have three sevens and I have a straight. You're bluffing so hard it's coming out your ears. <laughs> Three sevens. Six, seven, eight, nine, and guess what? Five. Oh, that was cool. I don't deserve you. No, you really don't. I'm sorry. I don't think you are. No, I, I really am. This is going to take some time. Maybe you can take me back to your apartment and I can accelerate the healing process. I don't think so, Natalie. I don't think you should be rewarded for your behavior. Stand tough there, Jeremy. What are you doing? He's my boy. You're his boy? Yeah, but it's okay. <laughs> Natalie, I think it's best if we spend tonight apart. You're probably right. I've got no clothes at your place anyway, so I just end up having to wear one of your shirts. And I know how much you hate that. was never even in it. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Good night. Where are you guys going? White dress shirt. Got it. Have a good show? We're not going to have a good show. We're going to have a terrible show. Dana, 
You've either got to stand over that woman's shoulder or you have to call everyone in the Pacific time zone and tell them I'm not really like this. No, the thing is, Jeremy's gone now. The cards are still hot and I'm feeling like I might be just a little somewhere in the vicinity of the zone. And you know what that means? Please don't say it. Shoe money tonight! <laughs> Dana. Please. Kim! Bring me a copy of the 2 a.m. rundown. Will, get me shot sheets for the West Coast hockey. Elliot, look at Bo's in early 20s and take out all the puns. Five of clubs, an ace for my sexy boss. Somebody take her money. No chance, Stretch. Jack and Diamonds, Ten of Hearts, also known as the Day of Love. Eight of Hearts, which is just known as...